All right, sorry for the late start, guys. We had some uh, technical difficulties. Uh, I don't know. I guess I'm the last speaker if we save the technical difficulties for the last. Uh, anyways, uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Adam Shaw. I have a company, Kabuki Vision. I've been developing apps uh, for about, what is it, six years now, and uh, putting them on the App Store and selling them for money. And uh, the talk I'm going to give, uh, at least originally, it was going to be called Mastering Auto Layout, but I kind of decided that I'm going to change it to, uh, let's see if this works. How do I go forward in uh, Keynote? This is not actually, sorry, I borrowed someone else's computer. Uh, it's just, I'm trying the arrow keys. Now, the, oh, there we go. Okay, uh, um, I decided to call it being awesome with auto layout because mastering, that's, that's a little, uh, gosh, I don't know, are we really going to master it in just uh, you know, 50 minutes? Probably not. So we're just going to learn to do some awesome things with auto layout. I, now, I, I have no idea what it was that I pushed last time to actually make it go forward. I swear Arrow's not working. Click. All right, so everything is awesome with auto layout. So I'm just going to keep, I have to remember to hit click on the mouse instead of uh, the arrow keys. All right, uh, let's get started because we're really running late and there's a lot to cover and I'm probably not going to have enough time. So um, why talk about auto layout? Well, if you've been paying attention, uh, Apple is pushing it as the way to do user interface layout. They introduced this about three years ago with Mac OS X, a year later in iOS, and it's clearly not going away. Every year it goes from, we have this new thing called auto layout, you should maybe use it, to we have this thing called auto layout, you should definitely use it, to hey, you need to use auto layout for real, seriously. And uh, this year it kind of became a little more obvious why that might be, because as we get more and more device sizes, we now have four size iPhones that iOS, iOS 8 supports, two different orientations, and an iPad with two different orientations, uh, auto layout will help us out a lot. Uh, keep clicking the wrong thing. Um, and auto layout, the basics are kind of easy. You know, you might have watched the WWDC session and Apple makes it look like, hey, this is not so hard. You know, you just set up some, cons some constraints and everything's cool. But the reality is, at least I found, that some of the more advanced users uh, aren't so easy. They, it requires a, a deeper understanding of how auto layout actually works. Uh, you may have had the same experience as I did. I started a new project with auto layout about a year ago, and at first I thought, wow, this is pretty straightforward, and pretty quick I ran into some issues that I'm always looking up things on Stack Overflow uh, and having to learn you know, that it's actually not quite so straightforward. So hopefully we can learn from some of my mistakes. Uh, this talk, some experience required. This is not going to be a basics of auto layout session. Uh, I'm not really going to have time to explain the basics of auto how auto layout works, what it is, what it's for. So uh, hopefully you all have some experience with auto layout. Maybe you at least know what an auto layout constraint is, which I'm sort of defining really quickly is relating some attribute of a view to some other attribute of some other view. It's like a rule that helps the system know how to lay out the views. And um, hopefully you also have done some basic level of setting up constraints in Interface Builder. I'm going to be doing some sample demo stuff in Interface Builder, and I'm going to do it kind of fast, and I'm not going to have time to fully explain what I'm doing from kind of a why am I clicking on this sort of perspective. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get going. I've sort of divided this talk into a series of what I'm calling awesome tips. Awesome tip number one. Auto layout is in charge of performing layout. Now, this might sound kind of like an obvious thing. What do I mean by this? Well, more specifically, you are not in charge of laying out the views anymore. Uh, before auto layout, you're probably very used to just putting the views exactly where you want at certain coordinates, uh, but we're no longer allowed to do that. Auto layout does all the actual laying out. And when I say layout in this case, I mean the actual positioning of the frames of your views. 
We still do provide a set of constraints that sort of describe how things get laid out, but auto layout performs the actual layout based on these constraints. And uh, one rule to learn from that is we're no longer going to be doing any sort of uh, my view dot frame equals CG rect make uh, anymore with auto layout. Uh, because we are not in charge of setting up the frame. Auto layout is. That's a little bit of a lie. There's a couple cases where you kind of can do it, but let's just pretend that that's, uh, that's an absolute truth for now. Which brings me to awesome tip number two. You know, I've gone through this talk a number of times practicing, and I, I promise you that will never get old. Um, <laughs> awesome tip number two. Uh, think in terms of constraints. Uh, this is not just a platitude. I really mean it. Think in terms of constraints. This will help you a lot in a lot of the more advanced things you want to do with auto layout. Uh, why is this? Well, constraints actually kind of express your intention. They actually have more of a real meaning for designing your user interface than uh, just deciding that something should be at some particular coordinate. Additionally, um, it frees you from thinking in terms of screen sizes. If you think in terms of constraints, you're no longer thinking about uh, things being exact coordinates on your screen. And that's really important as we now have so many screen sizes that you, uh, you should be uh, expressing everything in terms of constraints rather than exact placements. So for example, here's a button in a, in a view. And uh, we should no longer think of this as a button positioned origin uh, 12 comma 10. I mean, you know, we're all kind of programmers. We do secretly think of it that way. But in terms of actually doing your layout and designing your user interface, we really shouldn't think of it that way. Really, this is a button that, uh, you know, it has a, a margin on the top between it and its super view of 10 points. And it has a margin on its left of 12 points between it and its container view. Uh, and th that's very much how you would express that in uh, uh, express that as constraints. Okay, I think we're ready for awesome tip number three. Understand the auto layout process. How does auto layout do its thing? So, when you're first getting started with auto layout, it kind of seems like it's a bit of magic, right? We set up a bunch of constraints, maybe an interface builder. We run our app. The views appear on the screen, and it just works, and it happens by magic. And that's cool when you first get started, but when you start doing more uh, advanced things, uh, not really understanding how the system really works can trip you up. And it turns out that it actually doesn't use magic, that there is a, a series of steps that Auto Layout uses to do its thing, and um, it's actually kind of predictable, and we can use that to our advantage. So, it's kind of a three-step process. The first thing the system does when it's laying out views is it updates the constraints. After that, it actually lays out the views, meaning setting the frame of all of your views. And then it draws the views. And I know you might argue drawing isn't really part of the layout, but it's kind of part of the overall how to get stuff on the screen process that iOS does. So those are the three steps. And it does have to do them in that order. And that makes sense, right? You can't draw a view until you know exactly how it's positioned. And you can't position it until your constraints are set up exactly how you want them. And so uh, anytime you trigger any of these steps, it has to do the preceding steps in order to do the steps farther to the right. Um, so let's dig in a little more. That's sort of what it does. But, but what does this mean? How does it really do it? Well, in this case, I'm going to explain each step, but I'm going to start on the right. And the reason I'm going to start on the right is drawing views should be something that maybe you're already familiar with, because we already had to draw views even prior to auto layout. So views get drawn uh, kind of in a top-down order, meaning starting with a view, then it draws that view super views, then draws that, those super views super views, et cetera. And uh, we can let a view know that it needs to be redrawn by calling set needs display. That's how we trigger that. Uh, oftentimes, there's something else in UI kit that actually triggers that. But we can trigger it ourselves by that calling that. And if you implement your own UI view subclass, uh, maybe you're familiar with uh, overriding the draw rect function to actually draw your view's content. 
And the reason I started with that is because we'll find out that for the other two steps, there's uh, kind of exact parallels. Uh, during view layout, again, it goes from views to its superviews to its superviews, top down. We can uh, trigger a view to be laid out by calling set needs layout on the view. And if we have a UI view subclass, we can override layout subviews to actually do our own layout however, however we want. And similar for update constraints. The only difference is it actually does it bottom up, apparently, uh, starting with the uh, subviews and then working its way up. But again, we can trigger it by calling set needs update constraints. And we can override a, a UI view subclass with update constraints. <sighs> we will come back to this. There's a reason, uh, not just that it's, it's kind of interesting, but uh, we're going to solve a real problem and kind of take advantage of this information uh, pretty soon. All right. Moving right along. Awesome tip number four. Animate the auto layout way. Let's do an example. So one of the first problems I ran into, not really problems, but the first non-standard thing I ran into when I was doing auto layout was doing a standard UI view animation. And it's a little different when you're using auto layout. So let's do an example. Hopefully, if I hit escape, nope. Control tab, command tab, no. Command H, no. Anyone have any thoughts as to how to get out of full screen mode? I swear it's not working. I'm having nothing but <laughs> nothing but computer problems. I know. It, oh, that worked. OK, cool. Thanks. Yeah. We'll see. I'm cursed today. So um, sorry, I had to switch computers. So this is not perfectly set up exactly how I would have normally wanted to set it up. But I have this uh, sample project already going. Let's do some stuff here. Come on. There we go. There we go. OK, close enough. So um, I was kind of creating this sample project. I decided I was going to create a little app that uh, figured out the uh, most attractive presenter in dev world and uh, present some information about him or her, whoever that may turn out to be. And uh, so uh, I created this, this little app. And this I really haven't done anything here. I've already set it up. But honestly, I just did the standard template where it's like the single view application. And I threw up three views. So there's, a, uh, there's this UI image view. There is a UI label below that. And there is a UI label below that. And I've even set up a few basic constraints for the sake of time. The, uh, the image has this uh, top constraint, which uh, constrains it to the, the top of the status bar. The image also has a, you can see here, a width constraint to specify its width as being exactly 100. And I also have an aspect ratio constraint forcing the width to be exactly the same as the height. It's, um, and then the next label underneath has a little uh, vertical uh, spacing constraint that puts it eight points below the image. And it's centered horizontally. And the next label also spaces. It's a little spacing constraint, forcing it to be zero points below the label above it. All three have a constraint to center them horizontally. So this is kind of, I consider this uh, still kind of basic stuff. You know, this is what you would do when you're probably first setting up uh, your views. So let me run this, not as an iPhone 6, but as a 5S. Building, compiling, linking. Let's just prove that what I've done so far is reasonable. That is. OK, so there, there it is. It looks like it's working. And I'll rotate it just to kind of, a rotation is a good way of sort of proving that your auto layout stuff is basically working because it radically changes the dimensions of your bounds. OK, cool. 
Uh, by the way, one thing I forgot to mention, um, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, Xcode 6, who haven't been using it that much, you may be wondering why over here my, uh, my view controller does not look like it's any size or shape of, a, of any known device. It's just this big square blob. Uh, by default now, in Xcode 6, when you just add a new view controller and a storyboard, it does this. Um, it's kind of doing you a favor here because it's sort of uh, forcing you to not do your design based on any particular size or shape of any device, but rather uh, kind of this generic size and shape. Uh, but they provide you with this uh, in the assistant editor here on the right. This is a preview of what this will look like uh, as a iPhone 5S size, the four inch iPhone. So uh, our design is kind of shape independent, but then we can always have a quick preview of what it's going to look like here on the right. Okay, so that's what we have set up. Now what I want to do is I want to have the app, so if I tap on the picture of the presenter, the picture grows larger. I want it to animate to a bigger size. How can I do that? Well, one way that I might try doing that if I didn't have a lot of experience with auto layout is kind of the old way, right? So I already have this uh, outlet set for my image, by the way. And I have this little uh, property flag is image large. It's just a Boolean telling me whether or not the image is the large size or the small size. And here's my image tapped gesture recognizer. First thing I do is if it's large, set it to small. If it's small, set it to large. Kind of flip the flag. Then I have this animation block. And then if it's large, I set the frame to image large size. If it's small, I set the frame to image small size. So let's see what happens. It's actually already running. That code was already in it. And that's probably that code that I show is probably very familiar to sort of the, the pre-auto layout way of doing animation. Inside some UI view animation block, we just change our frame and it's going to magically animate it. So let's see what happens. Well, it's, uh, it's animating it, right? Um, but there's, there's two things immediately wrong. Um, one is when it's the larger size, it's no longer centering the image. And the second thing is, when it's a larger size, the, uh, the labels are no longer below the image. And there's a third thing wrong with it, which you'll see as soon as I rotate, which is it goes back to the small size as soon as I rotate. I can make it large, but then, whoops, it goes back. And the reason is, is because I broke, I broke the rule. I, brought the, I forgot what awesome tip that was, number three, I think. Uh, uh, I tried to do my own layout. I didn't let auto layout have full control over that. And what actually has ended up happening is it lets me change the frame, but then auto layout doesn't know that it needs to move the rest of the labels. And auto layout has no idea. You know, when it rotates, it just goes ahead and sets it back to what it thinks it should be. So how are we going to fix this? Well, if only I had a keynote slide to tell us. Oh. OK. Well, we can't update the frame directly. We know that. So we can update the constraints. The constraints indirectly will affect the frame. So we can actually sort of, we're not really animating the constraint, but we're changing the constraint, forcing the frame to be laid out again. We're telling Auto Layout to perform the layout. And let's see how we do that. OK. so. Back to my storyboard. Remember, this right here is my vertical spacing. Sorry, that's not the one. Here's my width constraint. And uh, as I mentioned before, here is the constant that determines the width. And what we want to be able to do in code is actually change this, the constant part of this constraint to a, a larger size. So how can we do that? Well, luckily. Uh, we can set a constraint itself as a IB outlet in code. So we can keep this constraint that we've created an interface builder, but we can access it in our code. So let's do that. Oops. 
view referencing outlets. I'm just going to call this uh, image width constraints. Cool. And I don't need to worry about the height because remember, we already have this uh, aspect ratio constraint that forces the height to be the width. So all I have to do is change the width constraint, and the height should magically go along with it. So let's see. Um, I now have this image width constraint. And so I'm going to steal some code that I had previously written, but comment it out. Oh, you have your scrolling set backwards, James. Your scrolling is, as they call it, unnatural. All right. So all I'm doing here is setting our image width constraint, the constant value, to either the large or small size. I'm changing the constraint. I'm not changing the frame. So let's see. Let's see what happens. What do you guys think? Is this going to work? Am I tricking you? Who knows? Ugh. Well, I was tricking you. It's not working. Um, but actually, it does fix all of the original problems, right? I mean, it, it's now the, the image stays centered, and the labels stay uh, below it. And if I rotate, it's still large. So I solved all my problems. It's just not actually animating. And uh, the reason it's not animating is because although I changed the constraint, uh, I did nothing to actually force uh, layout to happen. The layout did happen, but it happened at the next run loop. Uh, by, by changing the constraints, it did signal that the system it did signal to the system that it needs to do the layout, but it does it at the next run loop. I need it to happen inside this animation block. I have to kind of force it. So luckily, that's pretty straightforward. I can just. Here's my speaker image, and I can tell it layout if needed. And this is the this is what I it's basically uh, this method layout if needed tells this view, hey, lay yourself out. Is that even how you say that? Uh, if needed, the if needed part is that sort of internal flag. Um, I didn't have to set that internal flag that uh, set needs layout because in this case, just changing the constraint sets that flag. But I'm now just telling it actually do the layout right here. So let's try this. What do you guys think? Did I nail it? Is this going to work? Oh, I'm such a trickster. Um, no, it, 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 well, you know, hey, it, it, it's now animating the image, but it's not animating the labels. And the reason is, is because I told the image to lay itself out, but I did not, nothing else is doing layout. Remember, the layout happens top down. So this would cause the image to lay out in any of its subviews, but the image doesn't have any subviews, so that's not good. I need the labels to also be laid out. And so I could create a set of uh, outlets to those labels and call layout if needed on each of those, but there's even a simpler way which is I can just tell the main view itself to do layout if needed, and it will lay out all of its subviews. All right. What do you think? You guys dare uh, commit to whether or not this will work? Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that handsome face. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, that's the stuff. So the thing to remember is, you know, in your anima the, the, the way animation blocks work is just something has to happen to cause the frame to change to the new size you want. And all we've done is kind of force that to happen by changing our constraint and telling it to do the layout. All right, so let's move on. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch to the, uh, oh, this slide here. All right, I'm already on the right slide. All right, you already saw a preview of, uh, we're moving on to our next awesome tip. <laughs> Removing and adding constraints. And now I'm going to switch back to Xcode, because we just have enough for, uh, I just wanted to tell you what the tip was. <laughs> oh, don't worry, we're going back to the slides. 
Um, all right, so I want to, you know, this is cool. I, I, I like it, but, uh, you know, I've decided just for purely aesthetic reasons, I want it so that when the image grows bigger, I want it to actually center in the middle of the screen. When it's small, I want it at the top like it is now. When it's large, I want it to be centered vertically on the screen. So how am I going to do that? Well, let me take a look at this, uh, this constraint I have here. Whoops, let me switch back to the preview. Cool. All right, so this is the current constraint I have that attaches the top of my image to the bottom of the top layout guide. For those of you that aren't familiar, the top layout guide is this special guide that represents everything below the status bar or the navigation bar. Uh, but basically, just think of it as it makes it be below the status bar in this case. And okay, so how can I change? You know, maybe I can change this constraint to not have it be attached at the top, but but centered. But you know, how how would I do that? I I can't. Can I just change the constant? Well, if I change the constant, that that will lower the image. But what what do I set the constant to? How do I know exactly where the center of the screen is? I don't because the screen could be any any size. Um, this is the kind of situation that uh, it's not as simple as changing the constant. What I really want to be able to do is change the type of constraint it is. Right? I want to be able to change this from a top constraint to like a center y constraint. Okay. So how can I do that? Well, sorry guys, it's, it's the way Keynote works. I can't start in the middle of a slide, apparently. Um, the answer is, how can I change the constraint like that? I actually can't. Uh, believe it or not, the only mutable property on the constraint is the constant. I know that's kind of ironic because it's called constant, but uh, that's, I stole that joke from a WWC video, so I can't take credit. Um, but that's the only thing you're allowed to just sort of dynamically change on the fly. So what, what can we do? Well, it sounds kind of painful, but what we actually have to do is remove the old constraint, the one that pins it to the top, and add a brand new constraint that centers it inside the view. And we have to do it in code, which is either awesome or terrible, depending on how you feel about coding uh, layout-related things. And but for certain kinds of layout changes, such as this, it's, it's the only way. There is no way to dynamically transform a constraint. We have to just pull out the old constraints and put in a new one. All right, so how do we do this? Well, before I explain exactly how we do it, I want to remind us of, of this slide. And the reason is, is you notice over there on the left, that step, the first step, the update constraints, that's actually what we want to do, right? We're actually kind of updating, we're not updating a constraint, but we're updating what our constraints are. There actually is, uh, I should say, there, the updating of constraints is already part of the layout process. We can just hook into that. We don't have to do any, uh, anything, uh, well, we have to do something special, but the, the answer to the question of how do we do it is we should just hook into the existing mechanism. So we're going to use the layout process, that layout process that I just showed to our advantage. And there's a method on the a view controller method called update view constraints. And this method gets called whenever the view controller's view needs to update its constraints. Uh, whenever it's going through that three-step process and it's doing the update constraint part, and it's like, I need to update the constraints for this view, it calls update view constraints on your view controller. So that, that's the perfect place for us to put code that's going to remove or add new constraints, because that's just going to get called for us as part of the normal process. Um, we're not going to do this, but if you, instead of doing it in the view controller, if you have a UI view subclass, uh, update constraints is the, the thing you would override. And I can't remember if there's another bullet or not, so this might be scary. Yes. Uh, and triggering the layout will automatically trigger the constraints updates. Because remember, it can't do the layout, which was the middle step, until it does the update constraints, which is the leftmost step. So cool, let's do it. All right. Whoops. Ah, first thing I'm going to do 
is I'm going to add a new property. And this property is going to be an NS layout constraint. And I'm going to call it, what am I going to call it? Image vertical position constraint. And what this property is going to do, this is always going to hold whichever constraint we're currently using that will control the vertical positioning. When it's pinned to the top, this will be a pin it to the top constraint. When it's vertically centered, this will be a vertical center constraint. Um, but I'll just always have this property pointing at it, so I always have access to it. And what am I going to do with this? Well, I've already implemented the update view constraints method that I, that I warned you about. Whoops, that's bad. That's bad, too. There we go. Let me uncomment this out. And let me uh, run through what this does. The first line, I call the superclass, the UI view controllers, implementation of update view constraints. And you simply have to do that. It does important stuff. If you don't do that, you're going to get all sorts of debug log messages. Just make sure you call super somewhere in here. Um, then if I, if I currently have a positioning constraints, I'm going to remove it because I, I need to change it. Uh, it's going to, uh, it removes the current one. And then I'm going to create a new one depending on whether it's large or small. If it's large, I'm creating a new constraint that connects the speaker images center Y equal to the main views center Y. Cool. And for the small image, the image, the image's top gets pinned to the top layout guide's bottom, which really means pin it to the bottom of the status bar. And then lastly, after I've created this constraint, I add it to my view. All right, let's try this. What do you guys think? Is it going to work? Nope, it didn't work. I forgot one thing. Actually, that wasn't supposed to be a trick. I was supposed to tell you this beforehand. Um, the view does not know it needs its constraints updated. Uh, so here, I need to set needs update constraints. This sets the little internal flag on the view, letting it know that it actually needs to do this. All right, let's check it out now. Uh-oh. That's bad. All right, well, I'm going to kind of zoom through this. I, I had a little more troubleshooting we we're going to do. Um, you can also see it printed all this other crazy stuff. And the main important thing to note here is it says, unable to simultaneously satisfy constraints, which means we probably have some extra constraint that we don't need. What's actually happening in this case, the system stupidly goes ahead and tries to break our aspect ratio constraint in order to satisfy itself. But the reason this happened, I'm jumping ahead just because we're running low on time, but the reason is, is that I still have this stupid constraint here in Interface Builder. I've, I've, I've added my own in code, but I still have this one in Interface Builder, and now there's a bunch of conflicting nonsense. So let's see here. I could um, just delete the Interface Builder one. Uh, the problem with that is, as soon as I did that, you can see this little red dot, which for those of you who have used Auto Layout, you know means that Interface Builder is very unhappy with my Auto Layout setup. I do not have enough constraints. Uh, from its point of view, to, uh, to satisfy layout. And that kind of makes sense. It has no idea that I'm writing code, right? Interf uh, Interface Builder has no idea what I'm doing in my code. So what do I do? Well, I'm going to put it back. And it's actually really simple. Uh, I'm just going to mark it a placeholder, which means it's there for Interface Builder to be happy with, but uh, it actually gets removed when the app gets built, and then it's actually handled in code. So let's go, and let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. It's the best thing I've ever written. <laughs> OK, cool. So god, we're running late. Ah, let's move forward. Uh, did that, did that. There's only six of them, so we're already at the last one. Use constraint priorities for more dynamic layout. What the hell does that mean? Um, 
For those of you who don't know, every constraint in your system has a priority number assigned to it between 1 and 1,000. 1,000 is the highest priority, 1 is the lowest priority. Uh, when you have conflicting constraints, auto layout resolves the conflicts by using the priorities. Um, and it actually, that's fine, that's part of the system. That, like, it considers that a success when it's able to resolve conflicts based on priorities. Unlike when it's not able to resolve conflicts, when everything's the same priority, it just kind of gives up and prints a bunch of crap in your uh, debug log. Uh, when this happens, the highest priority constraint wins, and the lowest uh, priority constraint just gets completely ignored at that moment. Now, why am I telling you all this? Well. Taking advantage of constraint priorities, priorities lets us do a type of conditional layout. It's sort of like a way of letting us say, you know what, we sometimes want this constraint to be used and we sometimes want this other one and it depends on the size and position of other things. So we kind of are going to be creating multiple constraints that we know kind of conflict but purposely using priorities to, uh, to help the system resolve them properly. So, Let's, we're going to do another example. Um, this is a standard navigation bar. Uh, it has a left button, it has a right button, and it has a title. For those of you who pay close attention to things, you probably know that uh, it always tries to uh, put the left button on the left, the right button on the right, and it always centers the title. This is the standard control. This, isn't nothing, this is nothing that I've written. But if your left button happens to be very uh, long, you can see what it does. It actually kind of nudges the, uh, the title over a little bit. You know, it, it tr it, so it's, in this case, it's trying to center it, but if it can't, it kind of just moves it over. And um, this has been the behavior since uh, the first version of, of the first iPhone release. Uh, uh, and so you can imagine uh, back then some Apple engineer had to write a bunch of code that did like, you know, figure out the width and compute everything, and if this, then move this, otherwise if the right button, you know, just complicated stuff. Now, we can implement this exact behavior in uh, auto layout in Interface Builder without a single line of code by using multiple constraints and priorities. And it's awesome, and we're going to do that now. All right, storyboard, get rid of you, keep you. Sorry, I had all this stuff set up before. It makes me so sad. Um, manic, preview, etc. All right, so we're kind of roughly back to where we need to be. So I've set up this, oh man, I obviously did not set this back to its original state before I started messing around with, uh... all right, hold on. Left button, my toolbar title. Oh, this is like a big like spoiler alert as for how everything else is gonna go, right? It's, it's, uh... So, yeah, yeah, look, I'm obviously gonna be changing priorities later. <laughs> Oh, goodness, what am I doing? All right, I think that's roughly back to how it was supposed to be. Uh, so um, here's what it would sort of look like. Let's go ahead and build this to see if I've correctly sort of undone everything. Okay, cool. So I put a, I'm not even going to explain. There's a button on the left, there's a button on the right. I did create this label for the title in the middle. It's, it's, uh, it has a center alignment, not center alignment, a centered constraint. Um, none of them have width constraints because they all use intrinsic sizes, which I kind of forgot to talk about, but an intrinsic size uh, for things like labels and images, you don't have to specify a constraint for the size. By default, there's an intrinsic size where it will size the view to be just enough to fit its content. Uh, so it makes the label like exactly big enough to fit my toolbar title. And I can rotate it and it looks good. Okay. But what would happen, in theory, if we... Oh, I've done something else wrong. Oh, maybe I just need to do this. Nice. Okay, let's, uh, let's say I did go ahead and make this uh, button a longer title. Okay, 
Well, okay, so I already did do something else wrong. Hold on. Oh, my goodness. I don't, whoops. Sorry. All right. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I want you gone. You, all oh, you spoiler things. Okay, cool. So now you can see what it would normally do if you just set it up kind of by default, right? I, I made the button longer and all it did was just clobber over my toolbar title and that's not what we want. So how are we going to fix this? What's sort of the first step? Well, I'm thinking in terms of constraints. What, what, what is sort of the meaning of what I'm intending to do here? Well, one thing I know for sure is I don't want the text overlapping. So I want to create a constraint that forces there to always be a little bit of space between the left button and the title, right? I want to make sure they never can overlap. So to do that real quick, I'm going to create this horizontal spacing constraint. And Interface Builder kindly decided to go ahead and, you know, by default use the current spacing. But I, wanna, I want it to be 8. And I really don't want it to be exactly 8, right? I want it to be uh, no less than 8 points, right? I don't care if there's more space between them. I just don't want there to be any, any less. So I'm going to use a different kind of constraint where I'm really going to say it has to be greater than or equal to 8. OK, so this is the result of what would happen. So it, it, did, it did kind of follow my rule, right? It, it, it made there be a, an 8-point space between the labels. Um, but it, it, it accomplished that by just uh, making the left button small and, and truncating the text. And that's not what we want. And rem remember, we kind of talked about what we really want is if the left button's too big, the, the, the center title is allowed to get kind of shoved over a little bit. And what's really happening here is this, this centering constraint that I have, I've set it to a 1,000 priority. That's actually the default. That's the priority you get by default. And it means required. It's the highest one. It means you know, you're telling an, you're telling auto layout never to break that constraint, but that's not really what we want. We're, we're, we, we're kind of okay with it breaking that constraint every once in a while if needed, right? And the left button gets truncated because uh, for things with intrinsic sizes, there's this thing called the content compression resistance priority, which really means it's sort of the priority of how much it's going to want to not get smaller than its content. And you can see the default priority here is 750. And that's why we're seeing what we see. Uh, it's going to crush the button before it uncenters the other thing. So let's fix that. Let's just simply decide, you know what, the centering thing, that's not required. Let's just uh, lower its priority. And look, it did it. Did what we wanted. Pretty nice. And uh, let's just do a quick test. Because the one thing I want to test, OK, in this case, it shoved the title a little bit to the right, but in landscape mode, it still keeps it perfectly centered. So it's dependent on how much can fit. All right, but there's more. What would happen if we made this title a little bit longer? Ah, oh, it clobbers over the right side. Well, that's because we need to do exactly the same thing on the right side. Horizontal spacing, I'm just setting this up just like what I did before, making it 8, greater than or equal to, cool, sort of, except now what has happened? Well, crap, now we're back to this. Well, the reason this happens now is this has nothing to do with spacing and positioning, there's just simply more text that can fit on that line. You know, the, the length of the left button plus the length of the title plus the length of the right button, it just can't all fit. And uh, all of our UI labels have the same default compression resistance priority, which is 750. And the system has just randomly decided, ah, I'll compress the left button. I don't know which one I want to do. And what we really want is we want buttons, buttons, we, we, we never want our buttons to compress. We, our title should be the thing that gets truncated. So we're going to take the left button, if I can click on it, and we are going to make its compression resistance priority very high. 
so it's uncompressible. We'll do the same for the right. Ah, oh, look, it already is. That's something I forgot to do. And then look, it's doing exactly what we want. It's uh, nudging the uh, title a little bit over to the right, and it's truncating it. And uh, let's run that on the phone. That looks cool. It still looks, whoops, looks good in landscape. And uh, just for fun, if we were to run it on a 6 plus, on its huge massive screen, we would see that, oh, actually in this case on the 6 plus, it doesn't have to even truncate it. I think it is slightly nudging it to the right. I don't think it's perfectly centered, but um, so we've written something that actually, you know, adapts to the different sizes and kind of, uh, we've now emulated the, the, the behavior of the UI navigation bar without any code, just by setting up constraints in interface builder, just by uh, using priorities. So cool. And, oh, I forgot to click let's do this. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, there was a lot of other stuff that I wanted to cover that there's just no time for. Maybe next year I'll do a part two. Uh, auto layout in scroll views, uh, spoiler, it's a little tricky. Um, <laughs> Auto layout with custom view subclasses, advanced auto layout debugging. I wanted to get into all that, the debugging log stuff. You'll get a bunch of crap in your debug log and you'll be like, what the hell is this? Um, and so very much more. There are a few things that I really recommend in the meantime that you look at. There's a session, WWDC 2012, and I point it out because it's so old you might not think to go look at it. It's actually the first year that it was available for, that auto layout was available for iOS and so Interface Builder has changed a lot, so ignore all the Interface Builder stuff, but it's a great session for just explaining how to do complicated stuff like what we did using Auto Layout. And there's a website called obc.io, which you should all read for a variety of other reasons. It's kind of like a weekly magazine format set of blog posts about development. But in issue number three, there was a really great article called Advanced Auto Layout. And it goes into a lot of detail about that layout process, those three steps I listed. I kind of stole a lot of information from them. Uh, so I, I really recommend those two things if you want to learn more. And uh, thanks. You guys have been awesome. And uh, if you guys want to contact me, uh, feel free. Cool. I'm done.